What's going on, everyone? I uh, hope, like I said, everyone's doing all right. We're hanging in there on a Monday. We're almost at the end of the month, end of the quarter, which I know obviously adds zero stress to, to any of our plates uh, as is. So shout out to everyone out there making it happen today, doing what they need to do, still making the time to, you know, get some professional development. You know, talk, to, talk a little bit about um, tips for being more productive, less stressed. God, I think we all just need less stress, right? Or whatever, whatever form stress takes for you, uh, we need less of that. So uh, what's going on, everyone? I'm Jake Dunlap. I'm the CEO of Scaled Consulting. You found me probably through a LinkedIn recommendation or you follow my content. So appreciate you joining. Let me know where you're joining from. I think it's always fun for me to see kind of where all of you are based. Um, Maybe any end of the quarter, you know, I don't know, questions or things that you have. So, you know, the, the, the talk for today is three tips for being a more productive leader. Candidly, all this will be just as applicable to any of you who are on the front lines as well, too. So nothing that I'm going to talk about uh, won't be just as applicable if you're not, you know, VP of sales or uh, a CEO, uh, 100%. So, you know, I'll just kind of, I'll start with a little bit of a story. Um for me, I think as a leader, you know, and it's kind of interesting how at different points in my career, I handled stress and things differently. You know, when I worked at a bigger company, I worked at a company called Career Builder. Uh, what's up, Craig? Madison, Alabama's in the house. What's going on, Craig? Appreciate you joining, sir. Um, you know, it was really interesting. I don't know. I think it's because I worked at a bigger company. I, I was able to go into a leadership role and take more of a long-term mindset to that role that I remember very specifically sitting down, like talking to myself a little bit saying, okay, I think I got the job in March. It's like, all right, you got nine months to turn this thing around, you know? And I was like very deliberate. I'm like, all right, you know, these are the things, these are the people on the team I need to kind of, that, that are there that I need to develop. These are the people I need to move out. This is the bench I need to build. But I was able to take a more long-term approach. Well, then fast forward, I remember, you know, five, what, four or five years later, when I took over as VP of sales at Glassdoor, it was like me, I brought another guy with me who had worked with me before. And it was like, go hire 40 people immediately and go, you know, go figure all this stuff out. And so the stress was just like completely different. And I, I didn't, I didn't, for whatever reason, I don't know why, maybe again, it's just like that pressure, you know, higher, higher. I wasn't able to take the, t the same like six, 12, 24 month horizon mentally. And so why I'm sharing, you know, some of this with you all today is that, you know, look, we're living in a world right now, um, you know, where I think a lot of people out there, again, we're talking a lot about work-life balance. We're talking a lot about other things uh, as well, too, um, in terms of, you know, what works, what doesn't work uh, for certain people. And I think the other problem is like, you see kind of work-life balance stress and it's always like, take a break and you know, you gotta do this and take time for yourself. And I look, I, I advocate for that, all of that. Um, but also you've got to kind of come up with constructs that work in the environment that you're in. So I'm gonna give you all um, my tips for being more productive and feel free, hey, drop in the comments here, Craig at least hopped in. Um, you know, we've got, I haven't even looked at how many people we've got joining us, but, um, I'm excited for all of you, uh, to join. Uh, let me pull it up so I can see and I can hop in There we go. Got 12 folks in here live now. Love it. Um, is I'm going to talk to you again, like, what do I do to be more productive? And I've tried a lot. Like, that's the other thing I'll say too. I'll tell you something. I'll tell you my anti tip number one. So I read this book, uh, four, three or four years ago now called the 5 AM club. I'm like, that's it. That's what, that's what I'm going to do. And then I realized like, I really like sleep. So I did it. I got up between 5 a.m. and 6 a.m. for 44 days straight, 44 days straight. Didn't matter if I'd been out the, out the night before, didn't matter, right? Got up and it made me miserable. <laughs> it made me miserable. And so all the productivity things I'm going to give you that made me an effective leader that, you know, make me an effective CEO understand that it's about find out what works for you. For me, getting up at 5 a.m. was not the answer. And it's still not the answer. I still think about it. I'm like, God, that'd be great. Um, but all I did was work more, do more small stuff. It, it didn't work out. So long story short, do what works for you. 
So, all right, tip number one. All right, so this is, again, how I think about being more productive and less stressed. For me, um, my calendar is how I run my life and, and why this matters. So number one here, I'll just drop it in. My number one piece, where's my, didn't I just pull up LinkedIn? Yeah, there we go. Let me pull up LinkedIn real quick so I can drop my own stuff in the chat too. All right, number one, there we go. Craig from Madison, what's up? Or, all right, number one is calendar everything. Okay, that might sound you're like, wow, that sounds, uh, that sounds uh, intense. It's not, it's very interesting. People look at my calendar. We have new hires who start and they look at my calendar and they go, Jake, you are crazy. Like, you know, here, let me, maybe I can share my screen here. Yeah, let me see. All right, so this, I'll share my screen with all of you. So this is just on the fly. This is what it is. <laughs> uh, let's see, share screen two, or right, window, here we go, Chrome tab. Here's my calendar, okay, here we go. All right, you ready? Okay, y'all should be able to see this now. This is my calendar for this this week. I don't even know how many meetings this is, right? You can even see Friday's kind of light. Do I have a haircut in here in any case? any of you were key. I don't know. That's maybe 50 meetings. There's my men's league basketball. I play in a men's league basketball team. Um, 50, 60 meetings. And for a lot of people, I think that that's like, uh, what? Like, uh, like that that's stressful. And for me, it's fun. I, it's literally the opposite. Now, trust me, I don't like to sandwich like three weeks in a row necessarily. That's but, but you'll see there's like days in the middle that were a little lighter, et cetera. But for me, having it all in the calendar relieves all the stress because I'm like, oh, yeah, when am I going to work on that? So I'll block out internal work time. So I don't just, you know, block out meetings I have. I block out internal work time as well, too. And so for me, because I calendar all of these things, you might look and say, holy crap, this guy's got insane and and. And I'm like, no, like it, there's no, it doesn't give me anxiety. Like it doesn't. I mean, you can ask people who work, you know, have worked with me for years and years and they'll tell you like, Jake just likes it that way. And again, for a lot of people, it, there's a, to me, there's a freedom, right? I very rarely wake up in the morning or the middle of the night. You know, you have that where you're like, oh shit, I forgot about that thing. And no, my calendar takes care of it all. So if I know I got to get something done by X, Y, Z, it goes in the calendar. And then the other thing that I do too is with my calendar, like I'll give you kind of, this is my like one, my one B tip. So if one A is calendar everything, like one B is cancel or like move, uh, move meetings that don't matter anymore. You know, like how many times you get some thing you booked from like three weeks ago and then you're like, man, that stuff doesn't even matter anymore. You know, like it doesn't even matter that I'm like doing that anymore. So for everyone out there, just think about that, that I will do that. Like I'll, I'll probably look at my calendar at my meetings I've got on Thursday, Friday, uh, and definitely the week after I'll move the ones that don't matter anymore. Right. So I keep that calendar is like my digest and the way that I run what's most important to me and to the business at any given time. So that's it. That's what I do. That calendar, everything, that's my number one productivity, stay less stressed. A lot of you might have looked at my calendar and you got stressed for me, but don't get stressed for me. I'm good. I'll tell you if I'm like, if it's too much for me. Okay. Um, so what's next? So number two. So again, when I think about productivity, I think about, um, I don't know what, what matters most, how to avoid stress um, is this one. This, this is the one that I feel like so many people suck at. Be an expert renegotiator. Renegotiator? I think I spelled this right. Okay. So this goes back to what I said before. Whenever I, whenever you, 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 we all say yes to too much. Okay. <laughs> I still say yes to too much. I told you about how in my, my move meetings that don't matter anymore, that's kind of a version of this. But I'll tell you what I use, what I see is a lot of people. And what they think is like, I say yes to everything. Yep, 
Yep, because one, you've got FOMO potentially. You're like, oh, I don't want to miss out. If, if I say no to this thing now, is this going to, um, you know, nobody's going to want to bring me something in the future, et cetera. What I, the reality is, I'm telling you this, that the, the easiest saying to learn is, is this. And so this is how I learned how to manage up. So I would say, you know, absolutely. So I'll, I'll type this in here for you too. Absolutely. More than happy to. This is whenever like my boss. I have this and this and this as top as top priority for this week. What would you like me to move? Boom. That's it. And by learning that phrase over and over and over and over and over again, it's yeah, Brandon Jones and our team. He calls it. I think he says yes and. Yep, absolutely. And I have these other things. So what do you want me to move? Because for me, I want to focus on what's a priority. If you as my leader, you think that this thing isn't a priority. Okay, let's have the conversation. So I think that's something that I learned very early in my, my career was just to make sure I was working on what mattered most to ease my stress because we all overcommit. For any of you out there, you can give your virtual raise your hand or a hand clap or something. If in the last week you've overcommitted yourself, right? Um, I'll keep my hand raised. God knows I have done this every, I do it every week. And, and again, I get better and better at it probably every, every year. But, but what I'm also really good at is saying, absolutely, I'm more than happy to. This is what I've got on my plate. What would you like me to move? And so if you're, don't be nervous. The worst thing to do, and I tell my team this all the time, never fail in a silo at least go back and try to renegotiate. But don't just sit there and say like, oh, I, I overcommitted. Oh my gosh. Well, I'll just do my best. And then it comes down to the deadline. You're like, oh crap, I didn't do it. Right? Don't ever do that. There's no point. Like for me instead, again, if you're, if you're mastering your calendar, you know the due dates you've committed because they're in there already. Then you can look at what you've got going on a week from now and then go back to that group or someone and say, guys, I won't have time to get to this. I'll, I'll tell you another really like very real example. We had our extended leadership meeting at the beginning of uh, June. And during that, I took the homework item as a CEO to help to reshape our meeting structure schedule for our consulting leadership team. Um, Reality is, I looked at my calendar after the meeting. I was like, oh my God, I have got, I've got a lot of crap on my plate. I'm not going to be able to get to this until X. So I sent a note to the team. I said, hey, the best time I can find for all of this is here. I know that it's later than we had planned, but I can guarantee to get it done by then. And everyone's like, okay, great. Sounds good. You know, but the alternative would have been for me to try to rush, for me to try to jam it all in, et cetera. And then, you know, what you then what you end up getting is a bunch of disappointed people or half-assed work. Whereas because I put this thing that was due three weeks later, I could, I, that, you know, that would probably be my, man, I don't want to give it away as my number three, but I'd say my number two, I'll type another 2B in here. 2B for me is start early with something small. So what that, that means is like, I will start to try to avoid having to renegotiate I will try to start, like, just kick a project off very early. Even if it's like four or five weeks or two months, I know I've, I've got to have it done in two months. I'll try to get a little something done in the first week and then another little something as opposed to cramming for the test at the end. And so I really try to do a good job of, like, avoiding renegotiation by, pi by picking realistic timelines. And I start early and I start small. It drives certain people that work with me it drives them crazy. Well, not crazy. It takes them a while to get used to my working habits because they're like, Jake, this thing's not due for three weeks. Why are we, you know, like, why are you, why are you on my ass about it needing to get done now? It's like, because here's the other thing. If it's due at that, that point, we've got a big meeting. We need to dress rehearsal it. We need to beat it up. We need to then come back with a version three and a version four. If you're constantly waiting and you don't start early enough, you're going to always put out what you think is A plus work and it's probably C plus work. No offense, but it probably is C plus work. Okay, last but certainly not least. So tips we've given so far today. Number one is calendar everything. Okay, when you calendar everything, it actually allows you to do a better job negotiating up front because you can look at what your priorities are. Number two is we all overcommit, even though you might be the best at calendaring. You might be the best, but then what happens is you overcommit. So then what you have to be able to do, you have to go back and renegotiate. 
right? And it happens. So just accept that, like, I'm going to do everything I can to plan my weeks and months and days out beautifully. And then life is going to happen. And then the key is, are you one of those people that then like deals with that proactively by going back and renegotiating? Or do you just like fail? You know, do you just like say, oh, okay, yeah, sure, whatever, uh, as a part of that. So those are my top two. The start early with something small actually could end up being, it could have ended up being number three um, uh, as a part of this. So then the last but not least, okay, the drum roll, please, of number three. I'll type, I'll type it into the chat in the comments as well too here um, so all of you can see it. So being more productive, okay, doesn't mean doing more work, okay? That's not my tip. It's just more of an anecdote, okay? Um, I see a lot of people that they just pile on small tasks, small tasks, small tasks, and never get the big hard thing done. And because the big hard team, you know, we have trained our whole world now with Slack and email and everything is, is, is harming our brain. And all of you just need to understand the chemistry of your brain, which is every time a little successful task is completed or we check an email a little, we get a little hit of dopamine and dopamine is a trigger for our body that says like, Ooh, I did good. Oh, that was great. And so what I see happens is because we live in this always on world, we've got another video and an alert and alert and alert. We're so used to checking a lot of little boxes because it, it, it hits that dopamine, uh, makes that dopamine hit. And what we do then is we forget, though, um, that as a part of this, it's not just that. It's not just the small things, because guess what? The big things you don't get that little hit whenever you do like, you know, you build a little thing here, do something here. You don't get that same reward. And so I think for a lot of people, we've created this kind of working habit that's, that's engineered to give us little hits of dopamine, but we never get the big thing done. Never get the big thing done. Right. And so then you're like, man, why am I, why, why isn't this moving the needle? You know, why aren't I getting rewarded more? Or like, I think I'm doing a better job. And it's because you're working on a lot of little things and you've, you've lost sight of what matters uh, the most. Okay. So number three, um, after like my fourth anecdotal story there. All right. There's a lot of different potential ones that I could have picked here uh, for being more productive. And I've already given you all some of the other, some of the other ones uh, as a part of this. Um, so again, th this, uh, there's a couple of things here that I could give you tactical. I'll give those at the end, actually, team. I'll, so I'll give some more tactical stuff that I do um, as a part of this. But number three, and I think this is one is something that, that anybody can follow or anybody can learn from when it comes to being, being equally as productive and less stressed, okay, is control what you can control now and don't let your mind get cluttered with things that you can't control right now. So don't clutter your mind with things you can't control. Okay. This is a hard one. Okay. Especially if you're a VP of sales or you're a CEO, every, there's, there's a new something good and bad every single day. And what happens, man, when I think about like when it's at its worst, is that when your mind, you latch onto things that you can't do anything about it. You know, somebody does something to you, I, you know, and it's, it's Friday afternoon. What are we going to do? I don't know. I, 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 there's nothing we can do. So I'm going to try to, I'm going to, again, I'm going to put that on my calendar to deal with on Monday. As you can see here from going from the very beginning, the calendar to me is actually a relief mechanism because even though it looks cluttered to me, it, it runs perfectly because everything has a home right? Everyone, everything has a home. So I don't have to clutter my mind with things I can't control or that don't matter now. So what I try to focus on are things that I can do today that will have a, a, a either a long, a medium or a short-term impact um, and not try to focus on things I can't control in the present. And I know that this one's a little bit more touchy-feely, but I can just tell you that from, you know, someone who's led hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people, um, when you try to take on everyone's burden at all times, or you try to solve that, this was my big problem is I used to try to solve every problem in real time, you know, people problems, you know, relationship issues. I hated having this stuff linger around. 
And it caused me to again, like, but, but you can't time, you, you, there's no substitute for time. And so you have to be able to just put some certain things down that you can't control right now. And that could be an employee issue. It could be a, you know, relationship issue. Um, it could be, um, you know, a client issue or a project issue, but I can't, I can't change behavior overnight. <laughs> I can't, I can't want something for someone for them to change overnight, right? Um, instead, the best that I can do is hope, right? Hope that if I stay the course and I stay the path and I invest in that person or the relationship or that customer, that things will work themselves out. And so, you know, for me, when I think about some of these other, like these, these kind of how all these things coalesce together, if you think about kind of the life construct or work construct I've created for myself, right? I've created a world where I can not have to worry about problems or anything because I have calendar time set up to tackle that problem. So I don't have to think about it now. Then when I overcommit and my calendar becomes too much, again, I don't get stress because I also learn the skill of renegotiation, which means when I see things that happen and it gets to be too much, I've, I've over time have gotten comfortable. Hey, I have these things on my plate. Can you help me with this? Or is it okay if I actually, you'll, you'll just be shocked. Is it okay if I actually get this done next Thursday, let's say? And again, as long as you're doing it in advance, yeah, that's fine. Don't worry about it. You are going to be floored at how many times you're going to hear. Yeah, no problem. Absolutely. No, don't worry about it. Right. If, but you got to learn. So if you're going to calendar everything, you're going to release all your mental stress into your calendar. You then have to be able to realize sometimes you might calendar incorrectly. You might prioritize the wrong things. So be an expert renegotiator. Last but not least is don't clutter your mind with things that you can't control now or do anything about now. For me, that this is a really hard one. I just, you know, I want everyone to be happy. I want, I want everyone to win. You know, I, I run a company and I want everyone to be the happiest that they can be and, and be the best that they can be. But the reality is I can't, there's certain things I just, I can't fix them. And so again, what I'll do is I'll create <laughs> calendar time. I'll say, hey, you know, hey, uh, let's let's work through a couple ideas on this on this date, right? I keep a to do list. Uh, let me see if I can find it real quick. Um, too, I can probably show you guys this too. So what I do on my to do list, I didn't it didn't make the top three list. Let me see if I can find my most recent one here. I think I actually banged out a lot of stuff on that. So yeah, I don't have a star yet for today. I had a breakfast this morning. So what I do is this is my to-do list. You can't really, it, just trust me. I write like a maniac. So just don't, don't look at it. What I'll do now, cause I just got to my desk literally like an hour ago um, after breakfast. What I will do every day is I'll look at this and I have one, I'll two star one thing and I'll one star one other thing. And that the two star is like, this is the thing that has to get done. And then the one star is like, if I get this done, then do this uh, as a part of this. So for me, like I'll look now, Jake, to think about uh, YouTube, um, join and charge. I'm thinking about starting like a, 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 a fan page on YouTube where I'll do exclusive content. That's okay. That's interesting. Um, CVI, ability to go. So... Yeah, I already did that. So that one I can track off. Identify costs and roles uh, at renewal by 20%. Um, yeah, I think that's probably it. We're trying to work through some administrative things in terms of how we partner with our clients. So that's probably the one. So I'll double star that one. Uh, and then, you know what I'll do? I'll look at my calendar and I'll see if I can calendar block the time to actually do that one. Uh, so, you know, if not, though, I'll just like kind of go about it throughout the day and get it done. Um, but that's what I got for y'all. Um, a couple other kind of quick hacks. I'll just tell you right now. Um, don't have Slack or email alerts on your phone. This is, it's insane. I do, I'm telling you, I, I, I force my leadership team to turn notifications off. I force them to do it. You cannot. It's just miserable. It's like, dude, nobody, like, nobody needs to get in touch with you that bad. Right? And so... For a lot of people, it's like plus two, if you're like working at home, like you're already right here in front of your computer. Like you really need to have it on your phone too. It's like, bing, 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 you know, ding, 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 ding. It's like, 
no, come on. That sounds terrible. It sounds just like, again, like what you don't realize it's, it's, there's a dopamine hit of completing it. And there's a cortisol that happens whenever like, like cortisol is kind of this stress hormone, whenever it's just like onslaught, ding, ding, ding. You're like, uh, uh, like you're building up cortisol. And, and again, you guys could, could do your own research. I've done a ton of research on this about this kind of dopamine cortisol craziness world that we've created in, in business today. Um, so I try to eliminate those things. I try to not, I, I am an inbox zero person. So I, I you know, I, I can't say too much right now. Let's see, what am I at now? Again, like I said, I, I didn't check over the weekend. So yeah, I've got emails from the 24th. So from Friday afternoon, that's it. Um, so yeah, I have no emails in my inbox that are from before Friday afternoon. Um, and I'll go through, I'll get this clear off. Um, I'll get this cleared up today too. Um, so yeah, again, for me, I just really try to go through a lot of this. Um, I try to create a world that is helpful, um, and, uh, you know, doesn't get too, too crazy for me as I, you know, navigate the team and company. So I hope this helps some of you out there. If you need anything, DM me, hit me up. Um, make sure, do me a favor, go to the, if you go to scale.com right now, oh, that'd be the other thing. Just go to scale.com, sign up for our newsletter. Let me see if I can find this. Um, go to the website, sign up for a newsletter. I'm actually going to be doing a pre-recorded session that's going to release tomorrow on um, adoption, uh, sales process adoption changes. So go check out the website and you can, uh, you can check it out and see kind of like what we're doing there. You can DM me or you could DM Becca Edelman from our team as well too, and we can hook you up. But all right, well, look, it's very easy in today's world to be stressed out, right? And obviously there's a lot of things happening in our personal world, right? If you think about Roe Ro versus Wade, some other crazy shit you know, that's happening in our world to get really stressed out. So when you think about work life, okay, when you think about your work life, if you do the three things that I'm start like, I'm, and by the way, this, I, I don't know, I feel like this will kind of, this p could potentially help you in your personal life. Again, don't clutter your mind with things you can't control, right? Now, it doesn't mean don't take action and don't try to make it be a difference and try to make a change, right? Um, but also, you know, you can't, you can only obsess over things so long before they just don't serve you. So if you do these three things, you know, again, calendar as much as you can, re renegotiate when you overcommit, and then really try to use those two mechanisms to not clutter your mind with things that don't matter. You're going to be happier. You're going to be more productive. So I hope this helps all of you. Have an amazing Monday. I really, uh, I really love doing these. I hope all of you got a ton of value. DM me, say what's up, say hello, and we will see you all next. Well, I won't see you next Monday. It'll be the 4th of July. But I'll probably I'll be I'll be dipping in and out with some uh, some LinkedIn lives or something uh, later next week, too, for y'all. All right. Have a great rest of your week, everybody. Finish the quarter strong. Finish the month strong. And we'll see you later.